Imagine being 16 years old, abusing drugs, living on the streets of Harlem, and having no family to turn to. Well, that is the story of my next guest this morning. The challenge, an obstacle that she was able to overcome, will inspire and it will encourage you this morning. Maggie, thank you for being here with me today. No, it's my pleasure. And your story did. It, it did inspire me and it, it gave me encouragement to Maggie that if you went through this, there's other people who can go through it and they can also do what you're doing today which is helping others Maggie I know it's hard to bring up the past it's not an easy thing to do this is maybe something that you'd like tucked away but you have decided to talk about it and I want to know Maggie how you found yourselves on the streets of Harlem at 16 years old what led you to that well um, I started doing drugs when I was 14 Smoking pot, the, you know, the, the light stuff, supposedly. But um, between 14 and the years that I started doing heavier drugs and real heavy drugs, uh, there was an incident in my life um, where an old boyfriend brutally sexually assaulted me. Um, I walked away from that with no face at the time <laughs> um, and, and a lot a lot of scars and a lot of uh, anguish pain amongst other things that I did not know what to do with apparently neither did my family so I then turned to heavier drugs to try and deal with that horrendous situation um, and fell into a crowd peers my peers became drug addicts. Um, it seemed like the thing to do at the time. And um, I wound up doing some drugs that I don't even know if they make them anymore. I mean, there's so many new designer drugs, but way back when they were, they were considered heavy drugs. Heroin, um, cocaine, all kinds of downs, sleeping pills, anything I could to not feel. Mm -hmm. To not feel what you've gone through right. in the past and Maggie I'm sure when you look back on it too you realize it's a miracle that you're still here today absolutely I, I still don't even understand why I'm here other than to spread or communicate um, that there is help out there and and hope 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 is a big word um, I did find myself on the streets of Harlem 16 years old if I weighed 99 pounds it was a lot um, and going there to get drugs, uh, staying there for days because I was on drugs. Mm -hmm. Lord knows what happens to, happened to me when I was actually under the influence. Um, I don't have a lot of recollection of that. I do have recollection of other things. Um, I'm not going to repeat on television, but it wasn't good. It was not good um, for a young girl to be on the streets of Harlem in New York City, if anybody is familiar with that. Right. It's not a prime area um, and was even worse back then. I, like, I, can't, I can't imagine. Now, Maggie, did, did you have a moment where it was like a revelation to you where you just needed to get out of the lifestyle that you were in? At, I think I was 17. Um, I, did, I did stop doing drugs at 17. I realized that I was going to die if I continued doing what I was doing. Several people that I knew had overdosed, overdosed on heroin. Um, and it's not like a box of chocolates because you never know what you're going to get. You know, you just never know. Uh, and when I realized that I came close to death one time, I OD'd on two and alls, wound up in the hospital. I don't even remember it. Uh, but when I realized that I was going to die, I did call my mom to tell her that if I continue to do this, I will die. And she hung up on me. Your mother hung up on you. Hung up on me. I don't know if you call it tough love or I don't want to be bothered. Whatever it was, she hung up on me. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was quite an eye opener because it was at that point that I realized I'm the only one who could help myself mm -hmm. or at least take the steps to help myself. I, I had nobody else to count on but myself. Mm -hmm. So I did call a treatment facility. Um, it was called Daytop Village. Um, they're in upstate New York. And scared the daylights out of me. 
is an understatement. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it worked. You know, okay. what they did there, it was a therapeutic community. It scared the daylights out of me. Um, and I did stop doing drugs. Well, good for you, Maggie. So you were able to get the help and the encouragement you needed there to get over the obstacle you, you had gotten yourself into. Maggie, you ended up going to school later on then, too. I did. Tell me I about did. that. Um, several years later on, I, I just have an interest in substance abuse, I guess because it was always part of my life. And I, I was looking for some way to give back all the help that I had gotten through the years. Um, so I enrolled in what was called the New York Institute of Alcoholism and Substance Abuse. It was a private school. It was a one-year program. And uh, I completed it, which really was a big thing for me. Good it was very you. difficult for me to sit through that as well mm -hmm. as it is to talk about it today, but, but you need to. Absolutely. Well, good for you. And Maggie, another thing you've been able to do is you've really been able to encourage other people. You've been able to give them support, people who were in the situation that you were in when you were 16 and 17 years old. I've been able um, to help and encourage other people. I, I truly believe uh, that God works through people. So I always pray to him to be an instrument of, of his peace. And it comes naturally to me to be able to motivate people to want to stop substance abuse. I can, I can give them a whole chronologue of things that have happened in my life. And they, they bond with that. They, they, um, they understand that. And, and you can help them. You yeah, can help yeah. Them. It's, it's great, Maggie. I, I think it's awesome. I don't know how it help. happens. It just does. It's just a natural thing. Absolutely. It's just a natural thing. Um, and a desire to, of course, mm -hmm. you know, having been there. Well, you explained it perfectly. You know, you, you are being an instrument that's used to help them. And, and Maggie, what would you say your advice is for people, teenagers, young adults, who have found themselves in the situation that you were in when you were 16 years old? There's always help available. There's always help available. If you don't know where to go, go to a firehouse, um, go to a police station, go to a safe place, um, contact a treatment facility. There's always help available. Um, never give up. Never give up. There's always, always hope in addiction and, and substance abuse. Great. You have hope. to really want it, though. You do have to really want it, and hope it is a powerful word, isn't it? Most Maggie, definitely. Maggie, thank you so much for being here this morning, sharing your story. And everybody, thank you for tuning in with me today. I will be right back here tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. and then again at 8.30 a.m. So have a great rest of your day, and please join me right back here. If I